Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, this week we are fast approaching spring, and I wanted to do a fun spring floral themed painting today. I had some requests for more sort of folk art inspired paintings, which I love that you guys love because that's one of my favorite styles as well. So we're going to do something really fun, really colorful, and just very springy. Uh, and I call it Crazy Daisies. The flower that we're going to be focusing on today is daisies in all different ways. We're going to use our four standard brushes for today's class that we usually use. These four come in a kit that I like because it comes with the four sizes that I like to use. And this is a square wash brush here, uh, which is a three quarter inch. And then I have three pointed brushes. So I have what I call my medium sized pointed brush, which is a size 10. And then I have a size three and a size three over zero for my small little detail brushes. I'm gonna get all four brushes in the water cup off the side of the screen here. The colors that I have to start with are just for the background step. So I have some white, a little bit of cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and cadmium orange, as well as a bit of phthalo green. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. You'll find a link to my materials page, which will show you everything that you need. All right, let's go ahead and jump right on in with our background step. I'm going to grab my large square brush for this. And we're gonna really have fun with our background step today. We're gonna get crazy, not just with the daisies, but with our brush strokes here on our background too. So I'm gonna start with a light yellow, which is just going to be yellow and white together. And I'm gonna start up here in my right hand corner with crazy brush strokes. So brush strokes that go every which way. And they sort of overlap and you wanna get a, a little bit of texture in there and you can grab some white and um, kind of play around with it until it looks how you like and then i'm going to grab some orange without washing my brush and i'm going to bring that orange a little bit further towards the center here and it doesn't need to be exactly the same as mine we're just doing crazy colorful background and we do want to make sure that our colors are blended though okay it looks a little bit better than just putting one color on top of the other, if you can blend them together, that's what we're going for here. And I blended my yellow into orange without washing my brush, but now that I'm going to pink, I want to wash the brush so that I get a nice vibrant color. And I'm just mixing red with white. And let's see, I'm gonna go over here with my red. and start to bring that over towards my orange. And you may need to grab some orange again to help you blend the two together. All right, really get your arm going. And I think I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white here for the corner. So I just kind of have like a lighter pink and also sort of a lighter orange. Don't wanna to go too dark with my background colors. I do wanna have them be more in the realm of pastels. And I brought a little too much pink over here into my orange, so I'm gonna add some more orange, but that's looking pretty good. This is a very similar background to my Make-A-Wish painting, which is a painting of a silhouette of a dandelion which is one of my most popular paintings. It's also one of my oldest. I think I painted the original of that 10 years ago when I was teaching in-person classes only. That's been popular ever since then. <laughs> I've done that painting so many times. And so have, I think honestly, thousands of people at this point. I've seen at least, probably even more. So if you like this painting, you might check that one out too. All right, so I brought a little bit of my remaining color there, which was my phthalo green with some white as well. And then I don't wanna to blend too much here and get things too muddy, since this green is the opposite of red over here. So what I did is I blended 
I rinsed my brush and then I'm just gonna grab some white. You can see that it is blending a little bit to like a neutral grayish brown tone. But for the most part, we kind of want the overlap of the brush stroke colors here. So you see how I'm pulling some green over into the red and some red over into the green rather than blending, 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 blending and getting like a neutrally beige gray. That isn't the prettiest color in my opinion. That's really the only uh, way to mess a painting up in my opinion is to get your colors muddy. Otherwise, I think most paintings look pretty good if your colors are vibrant and you've filled your whole canvas in. That's my other pet peeve is empty canvas. No empty canvas, no super muddy colors. Colorful, light background here. Getting already a little bit of that rainbow feel. And then once your whole background is all filled in with these beautiful colors, we are going to let this layer dry completely before we come back and add all of our crazy daisies. So let's step away for a few minutes and we'll come back and do a whole bunch more. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background layer and a fresh rainbow of colors on our palette paper. So I have a little bit more white, some more of my cadmium red, orange, and yellow. Also a little bit more of my phthalo green. And then I also have some violet and some cobalt blue. Rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into things. We are going to do sort of like an in-between layer now. So this isn't our final layer, this is a middle layer. And we're gonna block things out and I like to use my second to smallest brush for these kinds of steps. And I'm going to start, I think I'll start with a little bit of white. And I'm going to start with my two sort of side like profile daisies. And those are going to be sort of the main focal points of my painting. And I'm going to start with one over here on the right and I'm going to do a little curved brush stroke for the stem. And then from the top there, uh, at a angle, I'm going to do a straight line and then a half circle. That's going to be our main little daisy shape. And then we're, we're gonna have the petals coming out from there, but I don't need to add them quite yet. Then I'm going to do an opposite direction swirl curved line and another half circle shape for a bigger daisy. Okay, so there we have a small daisy and big daisy. And let's go ahead and start blocking those out with color too. So I'm going to start with a light yellow. And I'm going to fill in my little half circle on both of my daisies with that color. Fair amount of white there. You might get a little bit of see-throughness. We should be able to cover that up with our next layers. But try to do that now too. We don't want too much transparency. All right. Just working on our shapes and our main base colors here, blocking out our shapes covering up that white sketch line. Okay, and sort of refining the shape as we fill it in as well. Great. Okay. And then I'm going to choose what colors that we want our daisy. I think I'm going to do a blue daisy. And we can do it with this small brush, or I think the big or the medium sized brush could work too. But I'm gonna start with a petal coming down, and then I'm going to go on sort of like a diagonal right along the half circle that we created with some petals. And this is also just the first layer of color. So those look good as far as shapes go, but let's get them a little bit thicker. Okay. 
each individual petal blocked out with our blue. We want them to get pretty cozy next to each other, pretty close together. And come up on that diagonal. I might even have a couple additional petals as well in between. So we want a nice full flower. Coming from behind and coming up from the sides here. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now, actually, let me just take the blue right up to my yellow, but I don't want it to bleed. Did a little tiny bit, but that's all right. Then I'm going to come back over that brush stroke because we do want all of our brush strokes going the same directions. And even just the brush strokes themselves are going to start to create a little bit of depth and different differentiation between the petals. Okay, then I'm going to grab a little bit of light purple for my second daisy. I'm going to repeat those same steps. I might go a little bit bigger with this daisy since it is a larger daisy. I'm going to add them on that same diagonal. So by the time you get up to the top line there, they've actually gone now horizontal important diagonal angle there. Okay, like so. However many petals you need, doesn't have to be the exact same as my petals. Just be mindful of the angle of the petals. and the direction of the brush strokes as well. Looking cute. And then I'm going to take my purple right up to the yellow just like I did over with my blue. And then come back and make sure all my brush strokes go in the same directions. I'm going to have nice opaque color, no see-through. <laughs> Little bit of a rounded end for each petal. Looking cute. Let's grab a little bit of a vibrant green and I'm going to do that with my phthalo green, but since there's a little bit of blue in that color, I'm going to add some yellow. And that'll give us a nice true green. And I'm going to do my stems. I'm going up into the flower there. Cute. All right, and then let's have a little leaf shape on each of our cute little side profile daisies. We'll do a nice big green one over here and then maybe a smaller friend over here on this guy. Cute, a little bit different, mixing it up. All right, those are our main daisy shapes. Now let's get crazy. <laughs> I'm going to start adding all kinds of colors now. I'm going to start with this green and I'm going to do a few leaves 
first with it. And really you could go however you like with this next step. Because we're gonna get a little crazy. Gonna add all kinds of colors. And we don't need to do one color at a time and then you've done every single thing that you want and then you move on to the next color. Ideally, sure, but you can always add a little bit more of any color thing or shape. Okay, so I've added a little bit of greenery. I want to do one big sort of center one with yellow right here towards the middle. And these are going to be more of like the folk stylized floral shapes rather than the more you know, slightly realistic looking daisies. So I'm gonna have a few of my yellow circles. Which will be my daisy shapes. And again, just mix it up. You can add these circles anywhere you like. Looking good. And we're going to do a couple different colors of them and also different sizes. We want to pretty much fill up our whole canvas with a little bit of peekaboo background from behind, but for the most part, a nice full composition here of circles with a few leaves as well. Very fun and so colorful. All right, and I'm keeping my brush strokes going in the circular direction here too. Always mindful. Okay, looking good. What color should we add next? How about some purple? I think I'll do a nice big one. Purple right up here. How about over in this corner too? Nice balance of colors here and there with each one. All right, definitely need a few more. I think it would be cool to add a little bit of a darker green, maybe do some smaller circles with the green. I did do an initial version of this that I'm looking at, but I'm also kind of going crazy here, going off the rails. <laughs> Since that's the name of the game today, and mixing it up. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. This is a good one to get creative with. Okay, looking good. We got a little bit of space left for some blue. We got some orange too if we want. Nice, vibrant blue, so pretty. Okay. Remember we can do smaller ones too if we want. And of course, I've got to use our orange too. I've made quite the mess on my palette. We want to be running out of space here. That is the idea. Wherever else we can sneak these guys in. Can we just add a few more? colors. <laughs> we 
which is my canvases has been kind of scrunched over on this corner. I think the whole shipment that I got got squished a bit. All right, that looks really cute. I think I want a little bit more leads. I'm getting crazy here. Just a few coming off of some of these guys. Of the smaller size, if you want. All right, that looks pretty cute. up your space whatever feels good and looks right to you I'm gonna take this opportunity I can see that my yellow is mostly dry I think I'll need a little bit of a second coat in here so I'm just gonna bring that in real quick especially the yellow because it doesn't have very good coverage power it's not a very opaque pigment naturally, so you gotta add a little white and then you usually need a few layers as well. All right, but then we are going to let this layer dry as well. We'll have one more final pass at all of our shapes and we'll add all of our little fun folksy details in the last part. I'll see everyone in another couple minutes. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry mid layer and a whole rainbow of colors on our piece of palette paper for our final part. I have again, some of my cadmium yellow, orange, and red. Also some more of my cobalt blue and some more of my phthalo green, some more violet purple. I also have a warm brown, so the burnt sienna brown, and then some black and white. All of the colors I think that we use, <laughs> except for ultramarine blue as well. All right, let me grab my second to smallest brush, detail brush here again for our last part. And this is going to be kind of filling in all the remaining space as well as doing a second layer on our colors uh, in our shapes here. So let's see, let's start with where we started at the beginning, which is going to be our daisies. And I'm going to start with a very, very light blue, and I'm gonna do a quick little brush stroke coming down each one of my petals with that light blue as a nice shiny highlight. Super cute. All right, and then I'm going to grab a dark blue with blue and black. I'm gonna have a lot of colors today. Dark navy blue. And I'm gonna do a quick little outline around the ends of the petals and I'm doing it very quickly in a sort of fluid motion. because so we want that sort of loose folksy feel. And then I'm going to do a few brush strokes there at the beginning as well. You can see how nicely that just comes together. Let's do the same thing for our purple flower. So just a little bit of our light purple. I'm going to do a quick highlight, a little pass on each of my petals. Okay, it's not an exact science. We're just getting our highlights and shadows on each of these little areas now. Okay, gonna grab a little bit of a dark purple now. Purple and black. And same idea over here. And it's okay even to sort of overlap a little bit. Or go further out into the background, rather. Color outside the lines today gives it a little bit more of that painterly feel. All right, and then a few at the base of the 
petals as well. Very nice. Grab a little bit more. Okay, looking good. Now I'm going to grab some of my warm brown. Take a little bit of white and a little just pinch of orange. I'm gonna come up with this sort of orangey, beigey brown. And I'm going to come in here to the center part of my daisies. I'm going to do a few dots on the outside and across the base. And work my way towards the top and sort of trail off once I get to the top so that we create a little bit of roundness. All right. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of a dark brown, brown and black, and do a quick outline around the center of our daisy and the bottom. And there you see we have such a simple and quick little cute daisy. We could also finish it with a little bit of a off-white highlight, so a very light yellow here. We could add a few dots at the top and sort of bring those down. I overlapped my outline a little bit, so let me come back and correct that. Cute. I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my other daisy center. Little dots with my brush. I'm kind of moving my brush around too so that I don't create too much of a pattern. I want it to be sort of random. Towards the base and then kind of coming up the sides a little bit more and trailing off into the top part where the highlight would be. A little bit of my dark gray brown. For a quick outline. Since we are doing that sort of folksy style today, we're gonna be outlining things. Rinsing my brush to take some of that light yellow into the top as well. So highlights and shadows added there real quick and simple on our petals and then also on the centers. All right, it's a little too white. Adding some yellow there, just helping everything blend nicely. Looks so cute. Okay, let's grab a little bit of a dark green now. So I'm gonna take my phthalo, add a little bit of yellow, and then a tiny pinch of black for a noticeably darker shade of that same green that we used for our stems. I'm going to do a quick outline with the black. I'm going to outline my petal as well. Such a simple and fast way to do daisies. Remember too that this is an online course, so use it to your advantage, the ability to pause and jump forward, replay anything that you need. This is a time consuming one, so I'm going pretty quick today. I'm going to do a little center line down each of my petals as well. So cute. All right. And we're gonna start working on our crazy circles. I'm going to grab some more of that pretty dark green and go around some of my green with this pretty dark green. I like that color. I'm going to be adding an additional color to all of our shapes, additional couple colors. 
to each one. I'm going to come in here and find my dark green circles and add a dark green circle around the outside. Just keeping my brush strokes fluid and loose. I'm not going to come back in there again and again and again and keep trying to get a perfect brush stroke, perfect circle. Just going to go around a few times, call it good. So we want that painterly style. Okay, looking very cute and super festive. All right, I'm going to work in the yellow daisies now. We can really have fun with this and create kind of whatever we like. And I'm going to start by doing some brush strokes along the outside. So I'm thinking about petals, but I'm also kind of thinking about like summer and sunlight with these fun patterns. So we have sort of like our more realistic big daisies. And these are sort of like daisy inspired patterns. Okay, that looks really nice. Let's take some red for the outside of our yellow. We want to outline each of these colorful shapes with a darker color. But we're also working mostly with vibrant colors now rather than making everything pastel. So we should get lots of, I wanted lots of different textures, colors, saturations. What maximum rainbow impact. <laughs> I think I'll take this red and also outline my orange circles. And it's okay to sort of overlap your shapes a little bit. Very festive. Also sort of textile, like pattern inspired, would make a good floral dress. <laughs> All right, looking good. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to add some white in my blue along the outside as well to sort of get that classic blue and white daisy feel. Cute. Just little brush strokes. little brush strokes. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna take a little bit of a very light green. And do a quick little highlight here in my daisy petals so that I have a little bit of balance of white. So I'm just doing little brush strokes on the way down and then one quick swipe through the stem. Okay. Pretty light green, almost white. And I think I'm going to add a pinch of yellow to it and maybe do also those same little kinds of brush strokes here in my additional green leaves. Lots of patterns today. That's what we want to do. Okay. Ooh, got one more little guy. Almost forgot. Cute. <laughs> All right. Let's see. In our purple, we've got purple, we've got red left. I'm going to take some of my red into my purple. 
going to do little hash marks here too. I'm going to go on the kind of four cardinal directions first and then do in between so that I actually have a little bit of like a gap in between each one. Just kind of mixing it up here. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, and I want to do a little bit of like a teal color with my phalo green. I'm gonna come in here and do a second layer of brush strokes from the center point on both of those. All right, and let's grab a blue. I'm gonna do a little spiral center We just have a little bit of the spiral over there. And then let me take a dark blue for our outline color, for our purple circles. All right. Things are starting to look pretty patterny. Vibrant. Okay, looks good. Let's also take this. Let's take it one pinch darker. Go around our little blue friends. I'm thinking those blue ones should have yellow centers. One more. Okay. Pretty cute. Light yellow. I need to do a few coats on there. Kind of leaning into that stylized. Daisy inspiration. Cute. <laughs> All right. And let's see with our green. Maybe we should do a yellow spiral. On the inside of those guys, we're really having fun today, mixing it up. You can even do your spirals in different directions. Okay, just a few areas left. Let's see here. I'm gonna go into my yellow daisies here and let's add, I'm trying to decide, getting creative, thinking blue circle in the center will be nice. Okay, that looks cute. And I think I'm gonna mix it up and do a blue outline of our orange dots here. It's a nice little contrast. All right. And let's grab some red for my orange center over here. Okay. And I want to start playing with a little bit of black. But I, don't, I want to be pretty sparing with it. So I'm going to go around my red circles. I'm going to go around my red circles inside of the orange ones as well. So we can see now there's a little bit of dark color on each of our shapes. So 
kind of doing like a little bullseye action there. Inside of our red circles, we'll do pink blossoms, pink petals. So I'm just going to take a lighter pink, even lighter. And just do that little petal shapes in each direction. Always helps to start with the northeast, southwest directions. And then fill them in from there. Cute. All right, and how about some purple centers? Pretty fun painting today, but we're not quite done. Okay, I think some dark, dark green for our remaining leaves. And then we're actually going to even to decorate the empty space. You can also do that with pretty much any color that you like. Make sure I got all of my little green leaf friends. Always adding a little bit of water to my paint. Okay. Cute. I'm going to Grab some nice, vibrant colors. Now let's do a little bit of a bright green. And I'm going to add some sort of fun squiggles with my green around some of these areas. They don't need to be all the way though. Just kind of starting to fill in some of these areas with these fun shapes. So I did green. I'm going to grab a little, like light kind of medium purple now. And add a few more of those same fun squiggles in a couple areas as well with the purple. All right, and that's looking pretty fun and funky. And grab a little bit of white. I'm going to do white centers here for these small orange and blue guys. Okay. And then I think I'm going to take a little bit of white back into some of these petals as a super light highlight that white your white and your black adds quite a lot with just a little bit that looks cute <laughs> looks really fun and then let's grab some blue maybe some light blue i'm going to just add some little dashes here and there as well so we're filling in our remaining space almost like a fun confetti this was a very unique painting today. I'm gonna add some confetti with my orange too. Kind of here and there, just filling in those final spaces. And then take a little bit of my gorgeous teal color. Or some teal colored confetti up top I'm sort of balancing the background colors so I'm bringing the teal up here whereas down here is already teal so maybe I'll add some yellow 
And I'm almost out of space in my palette too, but we are almost done. If you did paint along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can join and share your work with me and other people that have been painting along, whether it's from painting along with me or just from your own imagination. I want to see it, so please join us over there. Okay, and then you should run out of space pretty much entirely on your painting. And that's when you know that you've completed your funky, crazy, daisy <laughs> composition of painting today. I like it. I think it's really fun. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I want to hear from you. Do you like paintings like this or do we like sort of a little bit more realistic paintings? I think this is pretty fun. I actually might even hang this in my house. <laughs> because uh, I love bright colors and if you're painting along with me then you probably do too. So let me know what you think in the comments and make sure and join me over in the art club and that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So happy almost spring!